What's up guys, it's Sean here. Welcome to another episode of The Computer Scientist. Today I'm going to show you how to do sentiment analysis on the IMDB dataset using a neural network in TensorFlow. The IMDB dataset is a collection of 50,000 movie reviews classified as either positive or negative. So our network is going to take in a review and predict whether it has a sentiment of a positive or negative. So I'm going to take you through four main steps. Number one, downloading and processing the data. Number two, translating the review into a numerical format that can be passed into a neural network. Number three, defining the network architecture for processing the sentiment of a review. And finally, number four, training the network. So let's get right into it. So we can access the IMDB dataset online by searching IMDB sentiment dataset. This dataset contains 25,000 training reviews and 25,000 test reviews. So we can copy this URL to download the dataset from our Jupyter notebook. We will then use URL lib.request library as rec to download the file by specifying the file name to save it as and then calling rec.url retrieve passing in the URL and the save file name. And we only want to do this once, so we will first check if the file exists before downloading it. Once downloaded, we will use the tar file library to extract the compressed file by opening the tar file as tar and calling extract all. This gives us the folder named ACL IMDB, so we will also put another check for whether this folder exists in the current directory before extracting the file. If we look in this folder, we see that we have a test and train folder, each with two folders for negative and positive sentiment, where each of those folders has 12,500 reviews in it. We can look at the first few reviews to see what they contain, and some reviews still have the HTML tags. So next we will process and load the training data and labels into variables. So we will define a function that will return a list of the reviews and the corresponding labels from the given data folder. So for each of the negative and positive sentiment folders, we will go through each review in that paths folder, open the file for reading and read the contents into a variable called review. So here we will also do some refining of each review. So we'll first convert all words to lowercase for consistency and also get rid of those HTML tags. We also don't want punctuation as this adds noise, so we will use Python's regular expressions library to remove all but the letters and spaces and compress groups of spaces to a single space. Finally, we will split the review into a list of individual words and append that review to the review list. And for the label, we will use the index of the sentiment folder in the list using the enumerate function and we'll set the label with one in the first index for negative reviews and with one in the second index for positive reviews. Finally, we just return the reviews and labels. Now, after calling that function, we can see we have 25,000 reviews and the first review is the first negative review after pre-processing. So now that we have our reviews, we need to translate them into a form that can be passed into a neural network since neural networks work best with numbers and not with words. So this is where we will use word embeddings, which are essentially a mappings for each word to a vector of features. So we're going to use a predefined embeddings vector called global vectors or GLOV, which are available online and we can find the link to download them here. And in our notebook, we will download the zip file like we did for the IMDB data. Then using the zip file library, we will unzip the file and extract the contents. And we will use the glove embeddings with 50 features as our embedding size and so we'll save the file name as a variable. Then to load the embeddings from the file, we define a default dictionary to map each word to its index and also from the word's index to its vector. The default dict allows us to specify a type and provides the default value for that type for any unknown hash. So basically unknown words will get an index of zero and the index of zero will give us a zero vector. Then we start from index one and go through each line in the glove file and split it into individual fields. So the word is the first field and its vector is the remaining fields as floats. So then we just need to map the word to its index and the index to its vector and repeat it for all the words. Then after we load the embedding mappings, we will create a function to translate each review from word form to integer form, where each word will be replaced by its index. Then after calling this function, we see our first review is now a list of integers. Okay, so now we have our reviews as number form, 
but when we pass data to a neural network, each sample needs to have the same number of inputs. So if we calculate the length of each of the 25,000 reviews in a list and then show a histogram of those lengths, we see that there are many different review lengths ranging from a few words to like 2,500 words. So we will need to define a fixed number of words to set each review to. So let's choose 500 words as this includes most of the full length reviews. So then we need to truncate any reviews longer than 500 words and pad the shorter reviews with trailing zeros up to 500 words. So we'll create a function that goes through each review, creates a zero vector of the fixed review length of 500 words and then copies the integers from each review to fill up the max length of that zero vector. Then we can see our review that has now been padded with zeros to bring it to a length of 500. Finally, we now embed each review with the vector for each word in the review, where the zeros get the default zero vector embedding. So similar to mapping the words to ints, we will now map the ints in each review to the corresponding vectors. Then the shape of each review should be the review length by the embedding size. Now we're ready to define our neural network. So we define our placeholder x to hold the embedded reviews matching the data shape, and the Y placeholder for the labels, with the output size being 2. We also want to use dropout in our network to avoid overfitting, so we will set that as a placeholder with a default of 1.0 when it's not specified. For sentiment analysis, recurrent neural networks, or RNNs, tend to be best for sequences such as text, so we will use a special kind of RNN network called a Graded Recurrent Unit, or GRU network, with 125 nodes and a ReLU activation. We will then apply the dropout by passing this to a dropout wrapper. Then TensorFlow has a special function dynamic RNN which takes in the RNN model as well as the input placeholder and will apply the model to each word vector in sequence where it will output the resulting sequence of the outputs and the final output. We will then take the last vector of the output and pass it to a dense layer of 100 nodes with another layer of dropout before reducing it to the output size with the final dense layer to get the logits. We then calculate the error with TensorFlow softmax cross entropy with logits function and sum the error over the batch to get the loss and then we will minimize this with an atom optimizer with a learning rate of 0.001. Then we will calculate our predicted probabilities for each class with the softmax function and use that to determine the correct predictions and average those to get an estimate of the accuracy for that batch. So now that we have our network defined, we just need to split our training data into train and validation sets so that we can see how well our model is doing as we train it. Since our data starts with 12,500 negative reviews followed by 12,500 positive reviews, we need to shuffle the positive and negative reviews such that the network sees both sentiments equally in any batch. So I'm going to define a permutation that will give me an index list that takes one review from the start of the negative and then the positive and then alternating until the end. Then if we choose to split our data with a thousand samples in the validation set and the rest in the training set, then we will get our training and validation sets with the following shape. Now for training, we will use a batch size of 50. Then we will create the session and run the variables initializer and then train for 8 epochs. So in each epoch we will go through each batch and run the optimizer and also calculate the loss and the accuracy. Then for every 1000 samples we will calculate the validation accuracy from the validation set and print everything all together. So finally let's save each accuracy into a list so that we can plot it later on. Now since this is such a large data set that we're training on, I'm going to need a GPU. So I'm going to trade this on floydhub.com which is an online machine learning environment with access to a GPU. So in my floydhub account I'll create a new project and upload my notebook from before. Then I'll hit run and watch it train. So finally, if we plot the accuracy over each time step, we can see how it has improved from 50% to over 80%. Well, that's how you do a very basic sentiment analysis in TensorFlow. If you found it helpful, make sure you subscribe for more practical machine learning tutorials coming up. But until next time, keep learning like a machine. Bye.